My name is Megan and I'm the Health Promotion Lead here at Women's Health Action. We wanted to extend a really warm welcome to you all for coming along to this continuing education session throughout World Breastfeeding Week on Fano Expectations for Breastfeeding. This session has been put together especially for our health professionals who support hapu and breastfeeding parents. And this corridor is in response to the BFHI 10 steps to, to successful breastfeeding, but this time looking at it from a whānau point of view into our Māori. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce Tash Barido. Tash is our kaitiake wahine ora at Women's Health Action, and for the past 10 years, Tash has been a breastfeeding advocate in Te Tai Tokoro, as well as breast and cervical screening support to services and maternity support for whānau with mental health and addictions. Tash has worked alongside Fano Māori in many various parenting roles with iwi providers. I'm now going to pass over to Tash to lead the session today. Kia ora, Tash. Kia ora, Megan. Ngā mahi nui mō tō kōrero mō tō kupu i tēnei ahi ahi. Ai, thank you so much for your kind words. Um, ngā mahi nui ki ai a uh, um, ki Leilani Wikaru, um, tōku kai raku raku i tēnei rā. Um, ai! Kia ora whānau, whakanuia te wiki o whāngai u. Here we are again at Breastfeeding Week 2024. Um, so awesome to be with you again. And as Megan said, to have caught it all today around what actually are whānau expectations for breastfeeding in Aotearoa as they have told these words to us. Ko wai mātou, ko tāsh parera wahau, nō te mahurihuri ahau. Um, toko fa aku tamariki o rātou ingoa, ko tui, rātou, ko BJ, ko Julian Jarris, ko Anahira Grace. Ko Tony Mākeha, toku uh, huaranga tira, he kai whakairo ia, no waima ia. Um, in our whānau, I am a kai waiata, uh, a kai kōrero, kai tautoko, a kai tiaku, a kai whāriki, a kai manaki tangata o ngā wānango hene kōpū. So far, no. With that, why not at the beginning of our, our time together, do you know that you were magically transported into Ngā Wānanga Hine Kōpū? Wow, you didn't even feel a thing, did you? In this Wānanga, we explore our creation narrative. And today we will be using that narrative to absolutely speak about breastfeeding as well. So as all good stories start, they started right at the beginning. The beginning of the beginning. Also, before I, I get going too far, I'd like to acknowledge um, our corridor that has come to us in this wānanga via our whānau milne. 
uh, me whānau mākiha. Um, and the illustrations that you will see in this presentation is um, done by Tony Makiha, not just my partner, but a, a kaifakairo. He is a kava and a graphic artist as well. So at the beginning of the beginning, there was Iwo Matua Te Kori, and he had an abundance of love. And Fano, you might know this story and you might know other versions of this story. So if you would like to share your versions, that's all good for you to be able to be in touch with us. With this abundance of love, it just exuded out of him. With this exusion, exusion of um, particles of love, it was quite a chaotic place of lots of stuff bouncing around, bouncing around in the, in the ethos. And amongst this bouncing around of energies, there was te ao me ngā pō. And while they were bouncing, they came together at one point and became ranginui me papatuanuku. And who are they, Fano? They are our earth mother and our sky father, aren't they? Yes, this is the beginning of the beginning. In this place, we could talk about conception. We could talk about the beginning of your pepe or pepe for our Fano. We look at the, the whakatauki here, nā te kukune te pupuke, nā te pupuke te hihiri, nā te hihiri te mahara, nā te mahara te henengaro, nā te henengaro te manako. What that speaks about is not just the moment of conception, but a change in energy where you felt something different in your body and actually thought, oh, what's going on? Could I? No, surely not. Maybe. What if I am? Yeah, so we talk about the potentiality of being hapu. In this place, we might speak of a remembrance and, and how our life is right now, but then later on into a manako and a, a place of hope and where our, our life is going to be. But as I said at the start, Bana, we're going to tell a couple of stories at once. And while we're speaking about te kore, the potentiality, so not just the nothingness, we're talking about breastfeeding. So first of all, what does it mean to be a hinekopu? We call our wānanga ngā wānanga hinekopu. What does that actually mean? What it means, Fano, is that um, it's not a hapu wānanga because we're not talking about just a parent who is pregnant right now. Um, and then what? When, when they're not pregnant anymore, does that mean we don't want to engage anymore? No, a hinekopu is an expectant parent. So if I'm an expectant parent, what am I going to expect that'll be different today than it was yesterday? So this is where we manaki our whanau within ngā wānanga o hinekopu, to treat them like gold from the beginning, from the outset right through. And so what do we know about the potentiality of breastfeeding? We know that whanau are great at breastfeeding and that actually whanau are the champions of their own breastfeeding. I'm going to say that again because sometimes as services we can get a little bit fooled in ourselves and thinking that, that we are the ones that actually help whānau through everything and through breastfeeding when actually whānau are the champions of their own breastfeeding. Okay, so that means about the whole whānau learning about breastfeeding too. The Baby Friendly Aotearoa program that Megan mentioned at the beginning aims to enable services to better support whānau with feeding and developing close loving relationships to ensure that all people get the best start in life. And that BFHI, the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative and Baby Friendly Community Initiative are key parts of this. But the relationship whānau, the whakawhanaunga that you develop with whānau is lifelong and so important. Te kore, we moved into te pō. Te pō um, is the, the realms of the night. So we might have, there are many, many realms of the night, but we might talk about te pō kere kere, te pō tango tango, te pō uri, te pō nui, te pō roa. And so about the vast night, the warm night, the long enduring night that never seems to end. Yeah. And in that space, maybe there's a place of anxiety. Maybe in te pō uri uri, there's a spiralling into the night that can crash down into, into te pō uri or pōri, which is a sadness, isn't it? So I want to speak to this whānau because this is a place where even though my expectations for me and for my pēpī, for me to be able to feed this pēpī, maybe it sends me into an anxious place. 
maybe it sends my partner and my Fano into an anxious place too, because maybe we had our own um, issues or challenges with breastfeeding ourselves. So, or for my partner, maybe how, how, how are they going to know how they can best support me or support um, me to feed? So, first of all, what do I expect? There's no point talking about what I find no expectations if nobody asks me in the first place, isn't it? So I encourage you to be able to ask our whānau, what do you expect? And that might be in an, in an antenatal place before our pepe are born so that we can have some preparation. What else I expect um, perhaps is for the staff of facilities to be able to support me and help me with my first feed. I want to be encouraged to feed my baby whenever they are showing signs of um, cues, signs or cues, not just when a clock says that I should feed them or by what their weight is at this minute. That also, I will be given a list of phone numbers that can help me to, to find support after I leave the hospital. Remember what we said, Fano. Fano are the best champions for themselves. But also, I want to talk about hehataku rongoa. What are the things for me that I need to do or to go back to to find my own peace in this place? Remember, we talked about it's being quite a chaotic space. And in amongst all of the chaos, I want to be able to find myself and talk about what is my rongoa. What this means, Fano, is that we, when we take the time to have a conversation with people about where is the place that you go back to when you need support, when you need to feel grounded. Some may talk about going back to the moana, going back to the beach, but maybe I've just had this peepee and going back to the beach isn't the right thing for me to do right now. So maybe it's getting to Tangaroa in other ways. Is there someone who can take baby for a little bit so I can actually have a shower, that I might be able to have a bath and somebody might be able to pass baby to me to be able to feed inside of the bath? What are the things that bring me back to my peace? At the bottom of the slide, you can see this line, humaito poho, hei piringa. What does that mean? It means bring me to your chest, the place where you um, hold your most valued treasures, your most valued possessions. Bring me to your chest. This, this waiata um, we look at as being our breastfeeding anthem, if you will. Um, it was it was uh, composed by um, Queenie Motu Reedy, and we thank her for for this waiata um, as it gives us all the clues and cues for breastfeeding our pipi. Paul, we move into Te Kau Pipiri and talk about the unfolding of the senses. In this place, Pano, this is where our pepe, our atua pepe, were born to Ranginui me Papatuanuku, and how it was quite a cramped space inside of there um, that I can feel and I can hear and I can touch all of, of my other siblings around me. In terms of our breastfeeding, though, when we're talking about senses, we talk about kitty, 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 or skin to skin. And what might mum's expectations be around skin to skin? Is she going to be the one to do the first skin to skin or is someone else in her whānau going to do that? Again, a conversation that we encourage you to have. We know that when, um, when we hold Pepe skin to skin, though, that's the beginning of the transition to be able to um, help with our breastfeeding, isn't it? To bring our breast milk in. So as um, a parent, I might expect, again, to be able to hold my baby as soon as, ba as they're born. I would be, uh, I would expect that I could room in with my PP as well and to be shown how to hand express. Might not be a big deal, Fano, but actually to people, to mums, to parents, it might be a big deal, an absolute big deal. So these are the things that they tell us that they would love to be helped with and shown. Our line down the bottom there on this screen says, Homai to kiri, kia rongo atu o. So what that means is bring me to your skin, the place where I find most peace. Moving from there swiftly into Te Whaiao into the place of transition of thought. So in this place, next in our story, 
there was a spark of light in amongst all this darkness. It was called Hinatori, and it came from underneath Papa Tuanuku's armpit. Now, in such um, um, in amongst such darkness, our Tamariki Atua um, really noticed it. It was the very bright light, even though it was only the size of a nib of a pen. It was so bright. And they wondered, what is that? There was a few curious ones who really wanted to go in and find out what that was. Beryl looked at them and said, no, leave it alone. That's not for us to play with. Uepoto, though, one of the little siblings, because, you know, as we say, the curious siblings don't always do what they're told. Um, Uepoto started to creep closer to what is that light. Beryl threw a makutu at him. It went past his ear, whew, straight past his ear, yet he felt that go past. And we talk about Maybe that's that part of intuition, isn't it? Or that part of goosebumps that gives you a, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't go into this room right now. The next sibling, Mamaru, went, well, I'm going to go and have a look and see what that is. And Vero said, I said no. And he grabbed him by his top knot of his hair and he pulled his hair off, clean off his head. And we know from the Chris Rock and Will Smith slap a couple of years ago around that that came about because of, um, you know, making fun of Will Smith's wife's vulnerability. So we talk about maybe that loss of loss of hair as in vulnerable as in being vulnerable as well, don't we? The third sibling was like, OK, I'm going to go. I've got this. And Fiddle said, I said, no. And he stomped on him. And um, Uepoto splattered out into a hundred legs. And he scuttled off into, I don't know where, scuttled off. We know, what else do we know that has a hundred legs like that, Fano? A centipede, maybe, hey. And so that we know that if you're a gardener and that you're, if you're gardening, you pull up a rock and there's a centipede underneath it, it might rear up on its back legs um, in the fight or the flight mode. So, so we can see, again, these are plants of, of what make up our, um, ourselves. I talk about those ones because they, again, might be the things that affect us in our breastfeeding, around our vulnerability. So who is going to be there for me when, when I don't want to feed in public or when I do want to feed in public? I just want my baby fed. Yeah, what is my vulnerability in the, in those moments um, about fight or, or flight? What shall I do in those times where I feel like maybe I'm under attack? Do I trust my intuition, trust those goosebumps that they are actually giving me good advice? So I would love to be asked permission before anyone feeds my baby. So if I'm feeding him by breast milk, all good. Or, but I would love to be asked about um, anyone else who would love to feed my PAP formula or donor milk. So we understand the importance of donor milk and we thank Fano for their donations. But actually going back to this parent, going back to mama and saying, is this okay that PAP is fed, um, fed by other means? What about formula feeding? Maybe... Am I just hearing from you all about breastfeeding? But really, I would love to formula feed because I have my own reasons and my own thoughts. But how do I do that safely? Are you going to answer my questions without judging me or writing me off for other things because I'm choosing to formula feed? And then, how am I supported outside of breastfeeding? Um, are you going to, um, you know, worry for my tinana um, in other ways? Like I said before, what are the things that I need to do to be able to get back to myself? But also my expectations there are that if my baby does need a medical procedure, that me or someone else in my whanau will be with my pepe at all times. Yeah, that's an, another thing really important to us. Our pepe don't get left by themselves or go off by themselves. Um, and we need to keep those communications up. Kia ora. In Te Ao Marama is the place where 
after we we're saying about those tamariki atua going looking for hinātori and seeing what that was all about, they um, it was decided that the brothers and sisters would actually have their own first whaikōrero, a chance for them all to speak and have an opinion about what should happen about that spark. We, we, we know this as the first whaikōrero for um, recorded ever, actually. And at the end of that kōrero, it was Tani who said, the only way that we are going to um, kill that light or get rid of that light is actually to flood the world with light. So he put his shoulders against his mother, he put his feet against his father, and he pushed. And he pushed the first time, there was a little stretching. He pushed the second time, there was a bit of stretching and a bit of groaning. He pushed the third time, there was stretching, there was pulling, there was groaning from both sides as, the, as Rangi Nui me Papatua Nuku shifted apart and the world was flooded with light. Te ao marama. We also look at this as our aha moments. In our aha moments, what about me? What about me, Fano? Well, um, for myself, I will find my own midwife, or I'll ask if I can't find one. My expectations, like we said at the beginning, is that you will help me to be able to find one. I'll remember that my newborn um, peepee tummy is only the size of a small marble, and that. Um, because of that, that breast milk will fill it up really quickly and disperse really quickly in, in Peppy's body. And that Peppy will need to, to be fed again soon. So these are my aha moments. But then also, you need to give me time for me to get this as well, for me to understand this, that it's normal for my baby to be hungry and want to feed more often. And that the more I feed, the more body, milk my body is going to make. So the supply and demand, um, the skin to skin again, about bonding, about um, everything. It's not a coincidence, Fano, that when Pepe are born, they can only see about 30 centimetres in front of their face, which just happens to be about here to here. So when we are feeding our Pepe, that they can see our face and they can see our um, our actions, our reactions. And we begin, we believe that breastfeeding is the beginning of Rio. This is their first time of being able to communicate with us um, through their feeding, through their faces. So that next line says, Humai te kupu, kia korero. Bring me your words, give me your actions as the beginning of our real journey together. Ihe wa mauri ora. Yes, our pepe is here. Um, the, the earth has been, has been um, flooded with light. And things can now grow where once they were maybe stunted in the dark. We look at this stage, Tihe Wa Mauri Ora, as Action Jackson, because now our pipi is here, now our breastfeeding journey is all going and becoming well established. So this is the action part of it. But we remind ourselves, or you know, maybe parents remind us to health professionals as well, that it is the birthright for my Mukapuna to have the best start in life. And therefore, breastfeeding support services must be driven by the needs of me and my whānau. And that whatever choice of action that we choose, we will be supported and loved with no judgment. So that's another really important one, whānau. And sometimes if we don't have answers um, straight away, when we ask questions, hang on, let me start that again. Whānau don't always have the words that they need to express straight away. Or maybe don't feel a good whakawhanaunga and so are looking for friendly faces through the hospital perhaps or in the community to be able to help with breastfeeding journeys and that our expectation is that we will be supported and loved with no judgment. Our whakataki on this one says, I haere mai koe mai te ahuru mō wai ki te ao marama tauana. It speaks about an ahuru mō wai, our safe place. Safe places and safe spaces can be a lot of things, but they also can be things like the way I'm treated, the way that I'm spoken to, as well as the ahuru mōwai, the safety that breastfeeding um, provides to my pipi as well. The last line of that wayata says, nau neo, nau neo, because I am you and you are me. So, whānau, 
Well, we're, wherever you are, if you would like to sing to the screen with me, I'm sure I'll be able to hear it. Here we have put together all, all the lyrics that we've covered in this presentation today, and, and we'll sing this Waiata together. Ho mai to poho, he piringa ha. To poho, he piringa. Ho mai to kiri, kia rongo atu ahu. To kiri, kia rongo atu ahu. Ho mai te kupu, Kia korero, te kupu, kia korero, na hu nei au, na hu nei au, au e. I find no, but where to from here? What more can you do to help our find no? What I would encourage you to do is to absolutely be there to support our whanau for um, the big latch on and during breastfeeding, not just breastfeeding week, because whanau, we know that breastfeeding lasts lo a lot longer than just the week, isn't it? So in, we have a, a summer event for the big latch on, and these are um, some of our posters that we've had developed for the big latch on and looking at how you can see in all of these pictures that is absolutely whānau and tūpuna and whānau of every kind that come together to make this a successful journey. Ai ngā mihi māhana. Uh, mihi mea ka moi, moi moia ahau ko ahau anake. Mihi, mo, mihi mea ko, ka moi moia tātou ka taia e tātou. If I dream, I dream alone. But if I dream, if we all dream together, we can succeed. Our sincere, our sincere acknowledgements to all whānau across Aotearoa who have shared their kōrero with us so that we may be able to share them with others across our beautiful country. We continue to um, be so impressed by our whānau because they are the gold. So treat them like they are the gold too, please. Um, we also acknowledge your part in this journey and in whānau journey too. And thank you for your contribution to our whānau life and that you may be able to understand and share so much. So, so much. Ai, um, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā ra koutou, koutou katoa. Oh, kia ora Tash, namahi nui, thank you so much. I could listen to you all day um, and I really hope everyone's taken away as much as I have. Um, I really loved hearing about how our whānau are the champions of their own breastfeeding and just those practical ways that we can support whānau who are hapu or breastfeeding, asking whānau that simple question, what do they expect? That's really neat. Um, just on that note, we do have a resource, um, Women's Health Action, called Just 10 Steps, which is a resource for parents and whānau. Um, I'll link it in the footnotes of this recording, but it includes things um, that whānau could expect from their birthing unit or hospital, uh, tips from parents to parents, breastfeeding public spaces, returning to work, and some helpful links as well. So I'll put that in the resource um, in the footnotes. So if you have any questions, comments um, or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. And the easiest way to get in touch is by emailing us at info at far.org.nz. That's info at wha.org.nz. So kia ora everybody for coming along today. And thank you again, Tash. We're so, so thankful. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora.